Known as the Precision Payload Delivery System, this is the world's first operational cardboard drone that is literally changing the face of warfare forever. Here's how. It probably comes as no surprise that this drone was made in a place with spiders the size of dinner plates. Developed and produced by Australian defense company SIPAC, this company has built its reputation on creating innovative yet cost-effective designs for the cash-strapped Australian military. Due to the vast distances of Australia to cover, sending supplies via vehicle or plane was just too expensive. SIPAC created a drone that could easily supply remote outposts in the Australian outback for a fraction of the cost of previous delivery methods to solve this logistics issue. Hence, the Payload Precision Delivery System, or PPDS, was born. The PPDS merges modern technology with simplicity perfectly. At first glance, the drone looks like a miniaturized plane. Though SIPAC has not released public data on its exact dimensions, analysis of published photographs shows the drone is quite small. From wingtip to wingtip, the PPDS is around 2 feet long, and from its propeller to tail, it is also about 2 feet long. Standing at around 10 inches tall, the drone looks more like a middle school science fair project than a deadly drone. But there's a reason for this. Because the PPDS is made to be flat-packed onto a pallet with about 10 other drones per bundle, the PPDS is designed to be cheaply and quickly shipped anywhere in the world where a user can put it together with minimal time and tools. In fact, the entire assembly process to go from packaging to being airborne is only about an hour and involves rubber bands, hot glue, and a simple spanner wrench to attach the propeller. Combine this with charging the lithium-ion battery and an Android tablet, and the PPDS is now operational. Now the fun part begins. If you look at the drone's main body, you'll see that the PPDS has a shoebox-sized compartment. Inside this compartment, the drone can store 3 kilograms of weight, but that is hiding. Thanks to the unique wax covering SIPAC coats the aircraft with, the PPDS can operate in almost any weather condition, rain or shine, day or night. But how has the Ukraine transformed this prize-winning science fair project into what the media has dubbed the origami of death? While Australia initially intended the PPDS to carry out resupply missions in austere environments, the Ukrainians saw an opportunity. Because of the proliferation of Russian kamikaze drones that were wreaking havoc on Ukrainian infrastructure, the country wanted a similar weapon to strike back with. This is where Ukraine began to improvise. As seen in videos released by the Ukrainian military, PPDS drones in service have been converted to carry bombs. These bombs appear to be either remote activated or have a pressure plate behind the propeller that, once triggered, completes the circuit and explodes the aircraft. But unlike the Shahid drones Russia sends into Ukraine, the PPDS is much more advanced and can do things the Russians only dream of. One of the biggest selling points is the drone's autonomy. Remember that Android tablet we mentioned earlier? That actually comes in handy when doing mission planning. Because of the proliferation of GPS jamming in Ukraine, most commercial drones will not work. This is because when a jammer scrambles the GPS signal on most commercial drones, the drone will either just drop to the ground, hover in place until the battery dies, or, in a worse case, fly back towards its launch point. This would be a disaster for Ukrainian operators to have a bomb fly back at them or get bombarded by Russian artillery that saw where the drone came from. But how does a paper airplane defeat GPS jammers? Known as Ardu Pilot, this commercial software is a game changer that allows the drone to conduct military operations no matter how GPS denied the environment is. How Ardu Pilot works is basically a combination of onboard sensors and software programs to figure out where the drone is without any GPS. Ardu Pilot accomplishes this task through a variety of methods. The first of these methods is an Inertial Navigation System, or INS. The way INS works is that the drone will take off from a known reference point. Using calculations derived from speed and magnetic course changes, 
the software can estimate the drone's position relative to the preloaded waypoints downloaded to the computer from the Android tablet. Of course, this system is not without errors since, over time, the errors will compound and may drastically throw the drone off course. That's why Ardu Pilot has several other ways to keep the drone on track. By using what is called simultaneous localization and mapping, the drone can take images to compare them to known images taken during a previous flight with GPS. By doing so, the drone has basically taken a system the US developed for hundreds of millions of dollars for Tomahawk cruise missiles and put it into a paper airplane. And that is still not all the drone can do. On top of this, the drone has its own onboard barometers, rangefinders, and magnetometers. By comparing this data to the known data in the pre-recorded mission library, the drone has a very good idea of where it is in the world. Because of all this technology, Ukraine has been sending basically every single one of the roughly 100 PPDS drones it receives each month into action as kamikaze drones, and these attacks have had real results on the battlefield. In August 2023, the Ukrainians confirmed that the first combat use of PPDS drones in the aftermath of a successful attack on a Russian airbase in Kursk, more than 60 miles from the international border. During this attack, which Russian service members described as a swarm attack designed to overwhelm air defense systems, the PPDS caused catastrophic damage. In total, the PPDS knocked out four Su-30 and one MiG-29 fighter aircraft, destroyed two Pantsir air defense systems, and knocked out the radars of an S-300 air defense system. In total, the attack destroyed nearly $2 million worth of military equipment at a cost of no more than $5,000 for each drone involved. Assuming around 50 drones were involved, for every dollar the Ukraine spent that day, they did $800 in damage. Not a bad night's work. And this was just one attack. Reports on the battlefield show that Ukraine is using these drones just as fast as they come in. But how do they compare to more traditional attack drones, like the US Reaper or the famed Turkish Barakhtar? When comparing the differences between the PPDS and super-advanced military drones like the Reaper, an important distinction must be made. The Reaper was designed for the war on terror with its operators flying the drone from Nevada while unaliving bad guys in Afghanistan. To try and compare their stay time, payloads, and speeds of the Predator to the PPDS, of course, the Reaper, which costs up to $100 million per unit and around $3,500 an hour to fly, is going to be more advanced than the paper shoebox with a bomb in it. However, that difference is one of the main benefits of the PPDS over the Reaper. Cost. When a Reaper drone goes down, it's a huge deal and definitely makes the news. Additionally, with such a high operating cost, the Ukrainian military can potentially buy several PPDS drones for every hour a Reaper is in the air. But while the US has enjoyed absolutely zero interference from terrorists jamming high-precision weapon systems, that is not the environment Ukraine has to operate in. With all sorts of advanced jammers in Ukraine, systems like the Reaper may not even work in their current form or would, at the very least, be severely degraded. Because of this, the Ukrainians need a weapon they can scale, and it doesn't matter if it gets shot down or lost. However, as the attacks on the Kursk airbase prove, the PPDS is much more advanced than practically every other commercially available civilian drone. With a range of around 120 kilometers and a top speed of about 60 kilometers per hour, the PPS drone can still reach almost any target in occupied Ukraine and border areas like Tursk or Belgorod. Although drones like the famous Turkish Bayraktar are very good, especially since their price tag is around several million dollars per unit, they have their own limitations. In addition to being susceptible to Russian jamming more so than the Reaper, the Bayraktar also has an issue with economy of scale. While reusable, the Ukrainian military has procured no more than 50 Bayraktar drones during the course of the entire war. This number does not account for operating losses or those down for maintenance. Therefore, the total number of operational Bayraktars at any one time is much lower than 50. 
Because of this, though the Bayraktar solved some issues with cost, like the Reaper, the drone still did not solve the economy of scale issue needed when the goal was to saturate the battle space with armed drones. And this also does not take into account the one thing that the PPDS actually does better than both the Reaper and the Bayraktar – detectability. Whenever anything is flying around, whether it be a drone, an aircraft, or a missile, air defense radars look for it by sending out pulses of energy and then capturing the return of that energy to see what it bounced off of, where it bounced, and the time it took to return. Using this information, the fire control computers of air defense systems can basically interpret the raw data on the screen into what are the likely targets. This is because things like clouds and other atmospheric conditions can do all sorts of wonky things to radar pulses to make the data hard to decipher. When trying to make something appear invisible on radar, there are several ways to do this. Turning hard corners into curved edges, painting the aircraft with radar-absorbent paint, and using non-metallic materials to make the aircraft reflect less energy so the return looks like some clutter on a radar screen instead of a moving object. With the PPDS, the ace up its sleeve that makes it truly deadly is it is essentially invisible on radar. Being made out of cardboard, the drone is essentially invisible to most air defense radars. While some super-advanced radars may pick it up, the drone would have to be very close and at that point may already be too late to do anything about it. Essentially, the PPS system is a way for Ukraine to repeatedly punch Russia in the face while holding them back with the other arm. Additionally, because of the Ardu pilot software on board, it doesn't matter how much Russia GPS jams Ukrainian airspace since the PPDS will still find a way there. And even if PPDS does not find a target, it can return to its launch site and be reused again and again. In fact, the Ukrainians have reported some PPDS drones have lasted up to 60 flights. With this ability to keep a constant cover of invisible drones, there's not a single military site within 120 kilometers of the front line that is not susceptible to these drones. And the situation is only getting worse for Russia. After reports from the battlefield emerged about how successful the PPDS drones were in their current configuration, SIPAC began incorporating feedback from Ukrainian operators to make them deadlier. One of their main requests was to make a larger version with a bigger payload, and SIPAC has already figured out a way to do it. Known as the PPDS Heavy Lift Model, or PPDS-HL, this drone is even deadlier than before. With a max range of 200 kilometers and an 80 kilometer top speed, and double the payload at 6 kilograms, the PPDS HL can reach bigger targets further away. In addition to carrying weapons, Ukraine has started putting electronic warfare suites on these drones to jam Russian signals. Ukraine has also started incorporating these and the regular PPS drones in coordination with other drones and missiles. Reports from Russian service members have claimed that Ukraine now uses a lot of empty PPDS drones to confuse and overwhelm Russian air defenses. With these advances in both technology and tactics, the history books may very well remember that Ukraine was quite literally saved by a paper airplane. Bye for now.